Hello and welcome to today's psalm. Let God arise and let his enemies be scattered and let those who hate him flee before him. As soon as I heard these opening words of today's reading, it reminded me of the chorus that, from Graham Kendrick's song from the 1980s, which goes on. But let the righteous be glad. Let them exult before God. Let them rejoice with gladness, building up a highway for the King. We go in the name of the Lord. Let the shout go up in the name of the Lord. The song, which is based on the first few verses of today's psalm, Psalm 68. But I think the psalm develops much further. I'll read it and you can see what you think. The CEV version calls it God will win the battle. Do something God. Scatter your help, hateful enemies. Make them turn and run. Scatter them like smoke. When you come near, make them melt like wax in a fire. But let your people be happy and celebrate because of you. Our God, you are the one who rides on the clouds and we praise you. Your name is the Lord and we celebrate as we worship you. Our God, from your sacred home you take care of orphans and protect widows. You find families for those who are lonely. You set prisoners free and let them prosper. But all who rebel will live in a scorching desert. You set your people free and you led them through the desert. God of Israel, the earth trembled and the rain poured down. You alone are the God who rules from Mount Sinai. When your land was thirsty, you sent showers to refresh it. Your people settled there and were generous to everyone in need. You gave the command and a chorus of women told what had happened. God all-powerful. You scattered the kings like the snow falling on Mount Zelmon. Our Lord and our God, Bashan is a mighty mountain covered with peaks. Why is it jealous of Zion, the mountain you chose as your home forever? When you, Lord God, appeared to your people at Sinai, you came with thousands of mighty chariots. When you climbed the high mountain, you took prisoners with you and were given gifts. Your enemies didn't want you to live there, but they gave you gifts. We praise you, Lord God. You treat us with kindness day after day and you rescue us. You always protect us and save us from death. We have seen crowds marching to your place of worship. Our God and our King. The singers come first and then the musicians, surrounded by young women playing tambourines. They come shouting, people of Israel, praise the Lord God. The small tribe of Benjamin leads the way, followed by the leaders from Judah. Then come the leaders from Zebulun and Naphtali. Our God, show your strength. Show us once again then kings will bring gifts to your temple in Jerusalem. Force the Egyptians to bring gifts of bronze. Make the Egyptians hurry to offer presents. Now sing praises to God. Every kingdom on earth, sing to the Lord. Praise the one who rides across the ancient skies. Listen as he speaks with a mighty voice. Tell about God's power. He is honoured in Israel and he rules the skies. The God of Israel is fearsome in his temple and makes us strong. Let us praise our God. I imagine that when David wrote this, he started by thinking back to the Israelites leaving Egypt, thinking of what the Exodus meant what God had done to Pharaoh and his forces 
and looking forward to the promised land and thinking how it would be a just place. Our God, from your sacred home, you take care of orphans and protect families. You find families for those who are lonely. Perhaps something we can need today, something that we can think of for now. For me, it also has echoes from Isaiah's prophecy about letting prisoners go free and giving sight to the blind, which Jesus picks up and quotes. However, David wouldn't have known of Isaiah and of that quote, but perhaps it was the idea of what God would be like and what God's just kingdom should be. Perhaps what David hoped for his own kingdom. However, the latter part of the psalm suggests to me that it would have been written when David was certainly king and he looks around at the threats from neighbouring kingdoms, wanting God to intervene once more in Israel's story and deliver them from the threats around them. So how should we look at the psalm today? As wanting God to act again and deliver us? Or as a reminder of what God has done for his people throughout history? A reminder that we can rely on God, but that things won't always be rosy. God will act but not necessarily as and when we want, but in his own sovereign time. We can remember that even if things are difficult now, that we have seen God act in the past and we can rely on him, trust in his goodness and support whatever may happen. And so let us pray. Lord, help us to trust in you. Remember that even if things are tough at the moment, you are there. Help us to remember all you have done. How you came into this world to show us your way. Deal with the consequences of sin and prove that death is not the end. And you gave us that vision of rising in glory and ascending to heaven. That you are king, that you are in charge, whatever things may feel like at the moment. Help us to see that vision of you in glory. To hold on to that when we need something to look forward to. But also, I pray that we'll be conscious of you by our side. Amen. Thank you for listening.